What's up guys, it's Drak, and today we need to do a video kind of following up on a concept that we did a while ago. So a while ago we did a full dart breakdown and test. Uh, we tried to be as scientific as possible and we determined that for your money and in general there was no better value or performance based proposition than the dart zone waffle tip darts. They are very good both cut in half and full length. However, since then a lot of things have changed. My friend down under Bradley Phillips has done a video kind of comparing a couple of these players, but we have new darts from dart zone as as well as new darts from Hasbro in the form of Ultra, and as well as from Chinese companies like Worker in the form of Gen 3 half-length darts. So the only thing to do is crack this guy open and find out if these compare not only well to the new competition, but also to their predecessors. So inside one of these reload kits, which I believe are available right now, you get uh, two boxes, uh, one of which is your half-length darts, and one of which is your full length darts. Now, the one thing that I am disappointed about, and I'm going to point this out uh, really quickly, is that the full length darts and the half length darts do not have the same knurling. So as opposed to the waffle tips, which were very easy to cut down, a full length dart does not line up with a half length dart. And since the knurling is a little bit different, you will not get the same exact performance out of them. We're still gonna test it though. All right, guys, so I want to talk about a few different varieties. Like I said, these are the previous champions of our dart testing. Uh, they're versatile, they're strong, they have good weight distribution, they fly well uh, in terms of both distance and accuracy. Uh, and then these are the industry leader or the standard. These are, of course, why we use this length and caliber of dart. These are regular Nerf Elite darts. Now, we've also tested AccuStrike darts, and AccuStrike darts tend to be far better. Uh, but I just want to briefly touch on the, the new darts, at least in terms of full length here. So we have some full length darts, and you can see that they, they share the same length, although their heads are far more akin to the ones that we have from the aftermarket in that these are very similar to the kind of nubbin, the hard rubber tips that come on worker darts. However, the glue on these is uh, significantly stronger than, well, I mean, that's, that's pretty evident there. Uh, and in addition, each one of these seems to have flawless glue delivery, the same amount uh, sticking these into the same place. There's a little bit of flash on the dart zone darts, but that's okay because they give you uh, a lot of it, you can see, as opposed to the stems on an Elite Dart, which are uh, also similarly good. They're at least quality control wise better. One of the biggest issues with Worker Gen 2s was you can see that their heads just weren't affixed properly. And for a while, they tried lying to the community and saying that that was a feature. It's not a feature, it's just poor quality control. So luckily, on their Gen 3s, they seem to have tried to correct that, but you could see there's still a funky gap here. That gap uh, does not exist on our first uh, commercial half-length dart, which is to say uh, these have the same sort of head adhesion that the full lengths do. So I'm very excited about these. I did mention briefly that uh, I was going to test uh, the Ultra Darts, which are of course Hasbro's offering. And while we definitely have a brand new style of kind of finishing on these where it seems like the, the Pro Darts, or as they've been colloquially called the Bamboo Darts, uh, have been finished in a funky way. They seem to be regular closed cell foam, uh, although like put into some sort of heat press or vice. I don't know what kind of machine is doing this manufacturing process, but it means that if you go over these with calipers, they are, uh, they are so identical across their batches that it's, it's not even funny. So this one is 11.9. Uh, uh, this one on the ridges, 11.9. And then if we grab one, I mean, from hypothetically a different batch here and tighten in on it, it is the same 11.9. Although you could apply a lot more crush to this and get it down further or not. The consistency of these is quite, quite good. Now, the reason that we won't be testing ultra darts, of course, is because whereas this is made of a closed cell foam, this uh, is styrofoam. Uh, garbage. You could eat these. You could see inside the uh, the difference here, and we'll actually need a way to to cut a bamboo dart as they're a little bit more durable. Um, this is a closed cell foam. This is a polypropylene foam, 
And so the fragility of these, while they are entirely waterproof as they have no hole in them, this, uh, this concept of closed cell foam has potential. We've done that before with Stefan darts. Uh, it's just completely uh, inferior uh, in terms of its performance in all ways. They are neither more accurate nor do they achieve better ranges than regular 50 cal foam. So we actually won't be testing them because it's a massive waste of our time to prove something that we've already proven in both past videos and on the field. So. Uh, let's go ahead, let's take these outside, let's put them through a litany of Springer and flywheel tests. We'll concatenate that down so that it's viewable footage for you, but we will get you some results and let you know uh, what's better. Um, obviously, the Gen 3 workers uh, have completely outdated the Gen 2 workers, so these are better than these, uh, but we have no idea which one of these is better. Uh, they're both similarly priced. I think that the workers are actually a little bit cheaper, but I would argue that the, uh, the Dart Zone Pro Darts are a little bit better made uh, just in terms of their overall consistency and quality of their gluing and building. Uh, however, uh, the main thing that I'm curious about is whether or not the Pro Darts are better than the Waffle Darts and which one uh, has an advantage in terms of long range shooting and accuracy. So let's take them outside, let's put them through their paces and we'll give you the data. All right, guys, did you like my device, my invention? So this is one of my uh, Nix cages, which are designed in theory with accuracy in mind. Uh, it's been viced into a tripod, which has been stamped onto the ground. And we have down in this direction, a, uh, a pie tray. The pie tray is a consistent diameter across the test. I didn't measure it. Uh, but assuming darts hit the pie tray, they will register by piercing the aluminum foil and we will have kind of a general accuracy result. So I've gone ahead and labeled this one Dart Zone Pro. Uh, we're going to be doing this for full length Dart Zone Pros, uh, waffle lengths, uh, AccuFakes, and then we're going to do both of the two relevant half length darts and we're going to get our accuracy results that way. Uh, but I like the jig. I think that it's very consistent. It certainly beats like guessing uh, and in theory uh, I put a laser pointer in here and we're directly on target so we should be in good shape let's go ahead and start the trial Guys, you can't make this up. The elite grouping hit none of the targets. So I'm actually just gonna preserve and, and move on into half links because why tape up another foil thing? When All right, so this is more of a Phillips-esque kind of range test, but we've laid out a full tape measure. Uh, we're at the zero right now. It goes out to 110 feet. Uh, this is an arcane grade talon claw, uh, which is to say that we're using ubiquitous and non-biased barrel material. This barrel material is not proprietary to Dart Zone or Worker or Hasbro or anything. This is hobby grade barrel material. So this thing should perform very nicely. Uh, this is actually part of my last Kickstarter. It just hasn't been shipped out to its forever home yet, but each magazine has 10 darts in it. It looks like we're starting out with the actual half-length Dart Zone Pros, not the ones that I cut down. Then we have one with Worker Gen 3s, and then we have one with Cut Down. So the plan is gonna be to fire 10 as consistently as we possibly can, kind of shooting past uh, this tree down the line. Anything that veers more than like a foot and a half, two feet from the actual tape measure, we're just not gonna count. Uh, because then the range is obviously skewed lower. Uh, we're gonna try and keep them directly in line. A little bit of bounce is acceptable. Then we're gonna average the ranges from each of the three groups. So we're gonna shoot them all right now, same shoulder length, same shooter, same general principle, and we're just gonna try and be as consistent as possible. Uh, in a perfect world, we would make a vice or a jig, and we'd do it in a gymnasium, etc., and so forth, but uh, we just don't live in that world when we're testing hypotheses that we uh, already kind of have a pretty good feel for. So let's uh, see what we wind up with. All right, we, we hit the tree more times than I would have cared to. So luckily that's kind of what our, our outliers are for. All right, next up is worker gen threes. Let's tease that down, throw that in and go. All right, and then finally, our kind of funky cut lengths. Ooh. 
One of them did not want a chamber clean. Or fire well, for that matter. All right, there's some inherent flaws in this system. Don't do this, guys. Uh, I'll walk it out, I'll check our results. All right guys, so I did have to expand my deviation from the line, I brought everything to the line so that we could get data for you and make this sort of a more meaningful test. Now, this one right here clearly hit the tree and dropped, so I think that we should throw out at 42 feet this worker dart, uh, but as we go up, I think that the rest of the data, uh, this one, same story, so this is a, uh, a half length, at 51 feet and I'm pretty confident that that is also hitting the bush. Everything else I think is legitimate. So at 57 feet, we have one uh, of my cut downs. At 64, we have an actual half length. At 75, there's a half length. Then again, at 77 and a half. Then at 79, there's a worker. Uh, at 81, there are two. Uh, one is cut down, one is uh, an actual half. Um, then at 84 we have a worker, at 85 we have two cut downs, and then at 86 we have a worker. Uh, 88 is a cut down, 90 is a half length, followed by uh, a full or a regular half length, then cut down, cut down at 93 and 94. Over at 96 there was a tight grouping of one cut down, one of everything. Uh, then over here at 99 and a half feet we have a cut down uh, and then this is where things start to get interesting up here at 104 We have two of the worker gen threes and then as we get over here into the woods This would be at about 107 We have a cut down and then up in the woods at where like 108 and a half would be we have a regular Half length worker and regular and then whatever by my math we're missing three there whatever we're missing is over there. Um, Talonclaw is a powerful platform. Uh, I did blow this whole line clear, so this would be good data, but unfortunately there's no way for me to clear this rough. Uh, so I think that we can assume for the sake of math, let's just say that they went to the fence. Let's hypothetically give them 115 feet for the remaining three points of data, and that'll give us our results. So uh, there is a range test and an accuracy test. Let's go inside and talk about what all this means. All right guys, so it's time to talk about what we learned, what went well, what didn't work well, and kind of like some of those numbers made into real actual like data that we can use, interpret, and digest for various battle situations. So first off, uh, I like this because they made for very reactive targets. Uh, my hope of being able to boil them down and do like standard deviations from groupings, irrelevant. Uh, that's just not valuable. Um, unfortunately, just due to the nature of how the darts were grouping, uh, the point uh, was to see how many we could get on target and then you can kind of see in some of those misses how close they were versus I think that the accuracy is still a very strong indicator, but that's a tiny target uh, only 25 feet away. So like uh, in some ways a man sized target 50, 60 feet away I think could be equally valuable or interesting, but I think that it gives us really good data in terms of uh, how accurate these darts are. It lets you know that as far as half length darts go, uh, the Dart Zone Pro darts are killing it uh, very, very very strong. Um, it also lets you know that the workers, while like uh, maybe it was because it was at the tail end of the test, I feel like the workers have gotten better performance and like competition with them, but we're not the best. Um, that's not the end of the world one way or the other. And then I didn't test it in this specific instance with this test data, but we had really strong results with worker half links through uh, concavity based crush systems. And that's again, just one Nix cage setup. To do this properly, you'd have to run the test identically over and over and over again with lots of different cage geometries and lots of different setups. But uh, the math shows that the half link dart zone pro darts are exceptional. And then the thing that I thought was interesting that like really kind of matters is that there isn't a tremendous difference in terms of flywheel accuracy uh, between the waffle tips and the pro darts when they're full length darts. So uh, if you still want to like rock just ultra inexpensive really good flywheel darts, uh, I think that those full length waffle tips at five cents a piece are a fine deal. 
Now we could make memes about how bad the elite darts perform because they're legitimately just not an accurate ammo type. Uh, and we could go back and we could do more tests, uh, more iterations, including things like AccuFakes and AccuStrike darts, but we've already done that. And so the point of this was to kind of take new data and pose it into real world situations. And then in my case specifically, I care very, very much about that half length performance data. And I care about it in the context of how you can get these pro darts. So I think the pro darts are fantastic. I think they're incredibly consistent, which is more important to me than any other performance metric. Like their mean is very close to their, uh, their average, which is really, really, really good for something where consistency is perhaps more valuable than say overall range or overall accuracy. But accuracy, they're killing it. I do wanna talk briefly about how the worker gen threes got better range than the dart zone pro darts, either cut down or full length. Now it wasn't a whole lot. Obviously the, uh, the wonky ones that we cut down overperformed based on my expectations with an average of 88.6 feet uh, in range and then a little bit better than that and certainly more consistent. We had the pro darts with both higher shots and uh, a more consistent kind of grouping towards the tail end, but those were only at 91.3 feet and then blowing both of those away, we had the worker darts coming in Gen 3 at 96.2 feet. So they shot a little bit further. Now this is good news and bad news. It's good news because currently the only way to get these darts, which I I think are very valuable uh, in their respective kind of ranges is in a dual pack. And I've said a lot of good things about Dart Zone recently. I like a lot of the stuff that they're doing, but I think that this was a huge miss from Dart Zone to sell them exclusively in this pack where you must buy uh, both the half links and the full links at once. Your average nerfer does not have a use for both of those and certainly doesn't have a desire for them uh, in equitable amounts. Perhaps you need full links for a certain HVZ and want half links for competitive, but in a world where where you're selling premium match grade ammo that appears to be heat formed to those consistent standards, uh, sell people what they want. I know that most people, uh, at least in my space, are far more excited, more jazzed for the half links, and we're very disappointed to learn that not only do you have to buy them with the full links, some people don't even use the full length geometry anymore, but also that you can't cut the full links down into uh, identic copies of the half links. So I would encourage them, implore them to either change the mold such that they can be cut down or better yet, far better, uh, far easier, just sell them separately. Uh, now the prices break down such that I think the darts uh, for pro darts or bamboo darts are about 15 cents, so you're paying three times as much over the waffle tips. But the one thing that I do wanna mention is they'll work in springers and flywheels, which is really, really great. While the waffle tips are exceptional in electronic blasters, uh, they're kinda of hit or miss uh, in certain different breach systems. Now they'll work really well in something like, say, the Caliburn, which has a fantastic breach system and will shoot just about anything. But in a world where you're using breach systems that are either from Hasbro, from Dart Zone, et cetera, including the Pro with its plastic collar that mates the, the breach to the barrel, I think that you're far better off using something like the pro darts, like the worker darts, with their head that's narrower than their body. So this was really just kind of like a dissertation and a little piece of the experimenting that the hobby is doing kind of iteratively on these new darts. I think that Bradley was pretty much split down the middle and I really respect his opinions in terms of like long range springer shooting. Uh, he was neither one way or the other in regards to the Dart Zone Pro Halflings and the uh, the Worker Gen 3s. And in a world where the Worker Gen 3s are cheaper, I completely understand that. But for my personal results, both on and off the battlefield, I really like the consistency that what I consider to be like match grade ammo brings. And I mean, they're certainly, in my opinion, built better than the Worker 3s. So uh, that's just my 10 cents. My two cents is free. Uh, however, uh, they are a little more expensive and I really wish that I could purchase them separately. Like being able to buy just a batch of half links in any uh, number quantity um, at that price, uh, anywhere between 10 and 15 cents a dart, I would be happy to do all day long. So I'm really hoping that Dart Zone comes around with that uh, as we bleed into 2020 and I've heard whispers of it. I like that Worker has started getting their act together and while their darts aren't quite to the level of like exceptional consistency that homemade darts are, uh, they're getting better and they're, they're moving in the right direction. So as we get into 2020, I'd love to see Worker Gen 4s that are kind of on the same level of uh, identic that the 
the, the pro darts are. So I like this ammo a lot. I think that I'm really excited that there are companies, multiple companies now making actual half length darts at affordable prices because I still come from a world where we would spend a minute uh, at a time making handmade slug, Stefan, et cetera, darts. And ultimately nothing feels bad like as the sun goes down, scraping around the battlefield, trying to find literal minutes of your time and knowing that you're gonna leave 10% of them pretty much no matter where you go. So that's just my data. It's another little uh, add on to the pile of communal nerf knowledge that we have. Uh, if you agree with it, great. Uh, if you disagree with it, please let me know in the comment section down below. I know that for competitive nerf, I'm probably gonna be using pro darts until something better comes out just because of that consistency. And I know that for like funsy matches, I actually still have a bunch of gen twos and I don't really mind. As long as we're just plinking, I'll explode those in my, uh, my blasters all day long. I think that the most important, coolest thing, like my dream for the longest time would be if only one of these companies would start selling at brick and mortar. And I think that Dart Zone is certainly much closer than uh, Worker, but I don't, I don't see that happening anytime soon. But if it could, like I would love to be able to pick up a hundred pack of half links right before my war, no razor blades required. That's enough rambling from me, guys. However, if you're not sick of it, I hope that you all are having a fantastic Saturday. Uh, this one should be going live Saturday evening, and if you want, uh, this evening at about 7, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, I should be live on Twitch with Crow in the basement. Uh, you can hear me ramble about darts, and you can hear me be very frustrated and upset about building uh, a whole new rack of printers in my 3D printing space. So we're doing some home improvement tonight on Twitch. It's not our usual stick but if you love nerfing and you love making stuff I would love it if you joined me on twitch.tv backslash vampire drag tonight uh, you can find links to all the darts that I featured in the description box below don't forget to support companies that support our hobby buy your dart zone darts direct buy your workers from out of darts and foam I'll see you on twitch much love nerf on drag out <laughs>